welcome to Calvary. We're so glad you guys are here. Why don't you take a second now and go ahead and shake hands with people that are around you. All right. Good morning, church. Oh, I love the energy in the room. Are you guys having a great morning so far? Oh, it was great seeing the kids come through with the palm trees and for us to, to come together as a church and seeing Hosanna. You know, God, God saves us. Amen? Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here this morning. Um, if this is your first time with us, uh, a special welcome to you. Uh, in the song rack in front of you, you you'll find a, uh, a welcome card. Uh, if you would just take that, fill that out, and then right after service, out on the patio, we have a welcome table uh, at, the, at the gazebo. Just turn that in, and we would love to, uh, to just say hello, and then also uh, give you a free t-shirt. You might have seen a few people walking around wearing a, uh, a t-shirt that says, God's got this. You guys see that? Man, that, that, is our, that is our theme for this year, is that, you know, we, we are going to be a church that trusts in, tr trust in God and just understand that, man, God's got this, right? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So, uh, again, if this is your first time with us this morning, uh, welcome. And then also, if you, uh, if you have a prayer request or a need uh, and you want to communicate with us, uh, man, use that card, the same card, fill it out, and you can either drop it off in uh, one of the, uh, the boxes uh, up here or in the, uh, the, the, the tithing plate as well as that goes by. All right, we've got a few things going on uh, this, this month, this week, and so let, let's, uh, let's get into it. Uh, t so today, uh, right after service, uh, in the gym, if you ordered any of the, the C's candy for the, for the fundraiser for Brandy, that's going to be available for, uh, for pickup today. So uh, right after service, head over to the, uh, to the gym, and you can pick up your order over there. Uh, tomorrow, we have the Boutique Workshop. Anybody excited for that, the Boutique Workshop? Man, if you, are, if you are crafty and you love putting things together, and even if you're not, and you just want to serve and help out, they just need helping hands. So if you, uh, if, if you want to be a part of that, that's going to be tomorrow night at 630 in the fireside room. The fireside room is located just diagonally from here. If you don't know where it is, come see me. I'll, 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 I'll walk you over there so, just so that you know exactly where to go and to be a part of that. So that's tomorrow at 6.30 in that room. Uh, this Wednesday, Life Change You. Man, this has been an unbelievable midweek service for us. We, we absolutely, uh, I'm so excited we have a, uh, an all-church midweek service. And uh, th uh, this, this Wednesday, we're going to be actually serving uh, communion. So uh, man, if you want to be a part of that, uh, be here. Uh, it's going to be in this room, uh, 7 o'clock, service starts. And uh, it's going to be uh, just an awesome time this, uh, this week, you know, being Palm Sunday uh, today, Good Friday, this Friday, and to, uh, to come together as a church family and uh, remember uh, in Jesus Christ through, uh, through communion. So that's going to be this Wednesday at, uh, at 7 in here. Uh, and also, this Friday I mentioned is Good Friday. And so if any of you who are, who are interested, uh, we have tickets. George Franzen, he's right here in the center. He's going to be uh, out on the patio right after service. If you would like to get your tickets 
for, uh, for the Passover breakfast um, at Sims Park. That's going to be this Friday at 7.30 a.m. Uh, you can see him be, uh, and be a part of that. Uh, also, we have uh, this Saturday coming up, we have the uh, Easter egg hunt. You guys all have flyers in your bulletins if you have that. Um, we're g- one of the things that our church uh, provides is the cupcakes. So we have a huge uh, uh, section of uh, cupcakes for allowing for the, uh, uh, for the kids to decorate and sprinkles and all that, kind of, uh, all that cool stuff. And so we are needing uh, some, some supplies and some help with that. So uh, if you are able to, uh, we're going to be, uh, I believe, uh, Jessica or one of the uh, children's ministry staff members, they're going to be out on the patio at one of the tables, uh, either taking sign-ups or answering questions. Uh, so if you want to know more about that, you can go and see them. Uh, coming up March 30th is a Spring Spectacular. All right, for some of you who don't know what the Spring Spectacular is, you know, we all know what the Summer Spectacular is. It's a week-long event for the, uh, for the children's ministry, and they go off and they do activities and fun things throughout, uh, throughout the whole week. So when, one thing that Tiffany wanted to do is to do something during spring. So what we're going to do is just a one-day extravaganza, you know. So this is going to be a, a really fun, full-packed day uh, for, for kids. This is going to be kids from uh, kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade. It's $18 per child and you register by going online. So you go to calvarybellflower.org slash events, and then you'll see Spring Spectacular, and then you go ahead and click on the link that'll, that'll, that'll take you to the registration page. So, um, so you can see that. And then also coming up is Spring Formal. So this is, uh, I think this is our 20th year, right? Tw- or this is our 20th year anniversary of doing Spring Formal here at the church. And this is an exciting all-nighter for our high school ministry. So we get here. Uh, we're going to be getting here at the church at 5 a.m. We're going to leave, go to dinner, do a few activities and events, and we're not going to be back until 6 a.m. So please pray for the, pray for the leaders. That, that, that is always a, a big need. So um, again, for that, if registration's online, go to calvarybellflower.org slash events. Uh, it's $85 per child, or per student, I should say. And, uh, and if you're interested in sponsoring a student, uh, you can come see me, come see Ashley, or you can go on to our online giving on, uh, at calvarybellflower.org, and you can click the link that says uh, Spring Formal uh, Sponsorship, and you can give there. All right, and then the last thing but not least, man, Easter is next week. You guys excited? Our biggest prayer is, man, we, we, we would love to see this room full of people. Our, our goal, and Pastor has said it, you know, like, man, we want to hit 500 people. We want to hit 500 people in this room. And one way we're doing that to help is give, we're giving you guys invites. So inside your bulletin, you got, everyone has uh, these invites to give. And so, uh, man, really this week, man, invite your friends, invite your coworkers, invite your family. And uh, let, let's, let's just, you know, come together and have a, an awesome celebration. So just so you know, the format for next week, we have uh, sunrise service at 6 a.m. That's going to be right outside on the patio. And then uh, 10.30 service in here, uh, all church together. So we're not going to have any small groups or uh, student ministry during that 9 o'clock hour. So during that time, man, that would be awesome if you guys just, you know, hung out on your own, went to, went to breakfast. I know I'm, I'm, I'm planning on taking hopefully a couple of the students that come to the sunrise well, you know, I'll take them out to breakfast and take them out to, uh, you know, go, go get a Dunkin' Donuts or something. I thought, I thought that'd be fun. But uh, there's not going to be any child care for the sunrise service, but there will be child care uh, during the 1030 service. So for you, for those who, uh, you who have kids, just know that. And uh, that's, it, that's it for me. So why don't we go ahead and uh, welcome up uh, Alan Morris. Good morning. How are you? If you're visiting, I'm not the guy. (laughs) All right, next week, the guy will be back. And, uh, but I'm Alan, I'm I'm the CR ministry leader and um, we're having somewhat of a a CR, we don't want to say takeover because we know that might make some some folks a little nervous, but we are kind of helping, all right? And uh, uh, one bit of business, uh, the Spanish church that we lease the uh, chapel to, the, the lease renewals up. So in two weeks, we're going to, not next Sunday because it's Easter Sunday, but we're going to present that as part of a business function. And we just got to approve the lease going forward and continue to be a blessing to that congregation that is growing back there. So that was my one assignment. I got that done. 
the other thing is, is I, he mentioned uh, Communion Wednesday, um, especially during the significance of this week and what it represents and what we're celebrating. I really want to encourage you as, as our church family together partaking in that. And if, if that would, it would be a blessing to your, your Easter season. All right. So the, the people that are from CR that are going to receive the offering, not take it. All right. <laughs> There's a, there's a big difference there. And so there's no one here that has less than 30 days. So we're good. Including my wife. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for a morning where we can come together and fellowship and be part of each other's lives in terms of bond and community and kinship and uh, hopefully as a, as a church body that would serve you for this community. Lord, we ask you to bless the heart that gives. Help us to give until we're joyful. And we place this in your son's name. Amen. As we're passing those out, um, we have a new song for you this morning, kind of preparing for Easter and getting our uh, a mindset for that. Colossians says that, that songs and hymns should be for teaching, and this song is definitely a reflection of that. It, it teaches about the, about the gospel, and it has the um, message of, of a God who defied death uh, on the cross is now uh, allowing us to defy death and, giving, and resurrecting us. And the chorus is simple. It's your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. So uh, this is new to you. If you've heard it, sing along. Um, if it's new to you, just think of this as a new prayer to God. Um, but if you can, try to sing along um, if you believe it. So why don't you guys stand as we continue to sing. Christ our King. 
spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit I
ask you to open hearts and minds and we're so grateful for the representation for the meaning of your death burial and resurrection lord i pray that a heart today would be open a mind would be healed and a life would be changed and we pray, pray this in your son's precious name in jesus name amen good stuff huh real good stuff Like I said a little earlier, I'm not, I'm not the guy, the guy. Pastor Ken and a group of people went up north to drop off a check out of that money that we raised at Christmas missions when we reached that goal. And what I really appreciate about this action, this pr presentation, if you will, or what it demonstrates isn't that, hey, we're praying for you and we're mailing the check. And we're just, we sent a group of people, including uh, two couples from uh, Celebrate Recovery because we wanted to make sure the check got there okay. And... Um, and we were going and to that church today, and uh, they got up there early enough yesterday to spend some time with the pastor and actually say, 
hey, we hit our goal, and we love you, and we're praying for you, and we want to come up here and help serve with you tomorrow, meaning today. And by the way, here's a check for $5,000. Now, if that don't make you feel good about what we did at Christmas Mission Time, I don't know what will. And I'm not saying all that just to get you all built up so I can sucker you into some feeling to overlook my deficiencies in scriptures and this and that and the other because I'm a salesman by nature. I could sell you a car and tell you you need a paint job. Because that's part of my, my character defect because I need you to make sure you see all this other stuff going on over here so you don't see what's inside of here, which is a, a scared little boy who's broken, who made a lot of choices. who hurt a lot of family, who took his salvation for granted. Tuesday, I turned 47 years old. Oh, no, 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 I didn't do nothing. No. The sad thing was there's no game plan past 29. I'm Alan. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, and I struggle with addiction. You're supposed to say hi, Alan. There. The way we... Every Friday night at 7 o'clock, all right? Come on. Um, you know, so far, what we've done on Sunday hasn't been so different than what we do on Fridays, except during the announcements, we remind you to smoke by the fence. And if you want to kill yourself, you got to go do it over there by the fence and pick up your cigarette butts because uh, we want to be, uh, we want to be part of the family that takes care of this church. We want to be part of that action. The other thing that we do, and I'm going to ask you to play along, and since, since I get this opportunity and, and, and Pastor can't fire me, um, I'm a volunteer. He said, I, I told him, I, I, do I get a raise for speaking Sunday? He goes, yeah, we're going to double it. And so when you double zero, you get what? Amen. All right. So, this is kind of an interactive thing. I'm going to say the principle. You're going to read the verse. Now, before we get into this, I want to let you know that if a hundred or so addicts can do it on a Friday, you all should be able to do it on a Sunday. No pressure. All right? Let's, get, let's, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Realize I'm not God and that my life is unmanageable. You guys were a little gun shy at first and then you crept into it. Earnestly believe that God exists and that he has the power to help me. Okay, we got some stragglers. And I'm assuming it's your first time, so that's okay. Wait, wait, wait. All right, so I'm assuming he's not from Friday up there. Let's go back one. You know, you leave it to a normie and this stuff happens. <laughs> Openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. Voluntarily submit to every change God wants it to make in my life. Evaluate all my relationships, make amends, and offer forgiveness. Reserve a daily time with God. Yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others. Was that so hard? All right. So if you were wondering, like, hey, Friday's not for me. I don't fit in. 
Now you know you fit in. Because if you could pull that off right now, Friday night it's just a lot looser because there's some people that are, you know, like, but I heard all my little house girls giggling over here because they knew what was coming, you know what I mean? Cause people get stuck on that double verse sometimes, you know? But that's what we're here for. All right. When we apply these principles in our daily life, freedom from hurts, habits, and hang-ups is possible. I'm Alan. My story is this. Having met a profession of faith at six or seven years of age, right here, standing in between Al Coleman and my dad, Gary Morse. I grew up in this church. I knew all the Bible stories. Hosanna, Hosanna, wave the palm. From a very young age, I was part of different ministries and active in this church with my family. But all this was just to pass the appearance test, to buy trust, to gain trust, and to ultimately, ultimately take advantage of that trust. Breaking that trust and having enough rope to hang myself that led me to get caught up into a different crowd. I had already built up this habit of choosing one crowd to meet my needs so that I might become part of a different crowd. Graduating high school, addicted to cocaine, I went to church camp that following summer. Again, just to hide and create an image for myself so no one could see the self-destruction of my life. Eventually, I joined the Marines. I was just trading another crowd for another crowd again to meet my needs, to buy space. just covering up from my obsessions. I returned from Desert Storm, I was introduced to crystal meth. The next seven or eight years of my active addiction was running from one crowd to another based on what you had or what you didn't have or what I was trying to hide from or not try to be part of. All of this was trying to hide the destruction of my life, physically, emotionally, mentally, and worst of all, spiritually. The last couple of years of my run went like this. I got high, got really high, got high some more. Yada, 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 got arrested. Thought that way it's gonna change me. Found out I could lie some more. Went back to drugs and alcohol. Yada, 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 second arrest. Got a nudge from the judge, entered the VA Substance Abuse Treatment Program, September 29th, 1998. That's my sobriety day. I have 17 years. Without that 17 years, Tuesday's not possible. A 21-day program at the VA, and then followed by a 60-day sober living uh, program. Completed my first Sunday of 1999. My dad picks me up at the sober living, and I completed all the inpatient stuff. And it's early. He says, where do you want to go? I say, man, it's Sunday. Let's go to church. I didn't even know about the eight principles yet, but it was somewhere on that car ride. I knew in my heart Jesus Christ was my higher power. And he was the only one capable of healing Alan. Not any crowd. I was on my road to redemption. Principle one, realize I'm not God. I admit I am powerless to control my tendency to do the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. These are I actions. It's not for a crowd to decide for me. Two, earnestly, principle two, earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. Again, practicing these principles draws you into a road, a practice of your daily relationship with Jesus Christ. It's his relationship with me. He has the power to heal me, not my crowd. 
He has the power to heal this room. But this is, when you want results for him, you need to work on you. Principle three, consciously choose to commit in all my life and will to Christ's care and control. Man, it's so easy to stay sober when I'm working for someone else. Not working for whoever I'm getting high with or getting drugs from or whatever else. When I'm working for the king, it's so much different. All right, enough about me, all right? It's Palm Sunday. But I want you to get the example of a crowd and maybe challenge yourself right now and ask yourself, what crowd are you part of? Galatians 2.20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God who loved me and gave me, gave himself for me. Being crucified with Christ, having been saved. Who lives in who? Christ is in us. Making a profession of faith doesn't exempt you from living in the flesh. When I began living for Christ, placing my faith in the Son of God, my life transformed from satisfying my fleshly desires to striving to honor my King. Does your crowd right now hide your sinful desires? I want to challenge you this morning. Step up and step out of the crowd for the glory of the king. So how do I step out of the crowd and become a committed follower of Jesus? All right, so we got, we're going, going into the text here. And I'm, I, what I like to do, in, in, because of my typical Friday night, not everybody knows all the stories or know all the scriptures, so I kind of give the the Allen Reader's Digest version of what, what we're going to go through so that when you're reading it, it's not all shooting over your head. And even though we got versions that might make it less complicated and we got some, some guys that started off reading the Bible using children's Bibles or action Bibles, the comic and stuff like that, because it's like, I don't care if you're smoking out there or you're dragging, you're, you're coming in here and you're a little embarrassed about this, that, and the other. The, the word of God is the truth. And if you can't digest it yet, how are you going to improve? your life and, and obtain the blessing, the promise of the blessing that comes through the death, burial, and resurrection. So if it sounds like, oh, he's making fun of this or making fun of that, no, I'm just trying to break it down in some, some versions like this. And sometimes I might even say something that you're not familiar with. It's another vernacular or, you know, something like that. Like, like, like do you feel me? Or do you understand where I'm coming from? All right, that was just an example, but I'm not, a, don't run up here and try to feel me. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not that vain. I'm not like, oh, come on over here. All right. So the passage overview, all right, it's Passover, this setting, it's Passover. I want you to think Times Square, wall-to-wall people, busy, hustle and bustle. It's, 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 uh, it's an exciting time. It's frantic. Um, the, 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 people are coming from all over to celebrate something that hundred, occurred a hundred hundreds of years prior to when the Jews were led out of Egypt, and um, you have Pilate. He, he, he's there. He's there with the Romans, and because of, he knows all these Jews are coming in for Passover and celebrating, man, he's beefing up security. So you got, you got the people there to celebrate, and then you got, you got the Romans to make sure they don't get overthrown, and then you got, uh, uh, what was the dude's name last week? Phil the Pharisee. Phil the Pharisee and his guys, they're over there too, and they're just kind of like, I can't believe they're smoking out there. No, they weren't saying that. They were waiting for everybody. <laughs> they were waiting for Jesus to, to just do something sideways. You got the way religious. You got, so we got different types of crowds. And I want you to get you crowds, crowds, crowds. All right? And uh, then Jesus tells two disciples as they're traveling, go over to that village and you will see a donkey that has never been ridden grab it. And when the dude says, well, why are you jacking my donkey? And he probably didn't say that, but he, why? Yo, that's my donkey. Where are you going? He says, just tell him the Lord needs it. 
All right, so this is why Alan wasn't a disciple, because once I had the golden password, the Lord needs it, I would start grabbing everything. <laughs> All right? Excuse me, sir, where are you going with that gold bar? The Lord needs it. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, the Lord needs it. The Lord needs it. You cannot give a guy like me the password like that. But we're going to find out why the disciples were different. The riding on a donkey that had never been ridden is significant. It is significant because that was, that was something reserved for only a king. It was an action in of itself that was a declaration. So when he was doing that, he was declaring himself the king. That is significant. So Jesus is on the donkey, and he starts down the road, and he goes, what does the crowd do? They start laying down their cloaks. They're waving palms. They're praising his name. The crowd is cheering. It's awesome, right? Then the Pharisees, what do they do? They say, hey, Jesus, hey, make them stop. Teacher, make them stop. And he tells them something like, even if I could, the rocks would cry out. So go check yourself. Getting closer to Jerusalem, the city of peace, right? Jesus begins to weep. And I think because he knows that the cheering of the crowd doesn't always reveal the content of the heart. That in the next week, many of the people who cheered Hosanna will be yelling, crucify him. Are you part of the crowd? The first fill in, recognize. Recognize the authority of Jesus. Recognize the authority of Jesus. Um, I'll read Luke 19, 29 through 35. I don't think you have all that in your notes. As he came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into the village over there, he told them. As you entered it, you will see a donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it there. Bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owner asked them, why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. Okay, so is it just me? If you're told exactly where to go and where it's going to be at, and what you're going to be asking, how you're going to reply, I, I would be like, but if you could figure all that out, you could find something closer, right? I mean, I have to go to that village over there, something more convenient for me. The other thing is, is that if you're a disciple and you've hung out with Jesus and you've seen the miracles and you've seen them go, you know, this is, this is the only time you've ever been asked to go you may ask to do a few things, you know, collect fishes and low, or, you know, do all these, and, and, but to go get a donkey, what's he going to do? We've ridden in boats, we've done this. And so even though as men, they might have questioned it in their hearts, they respect the authority and they just do it. They follow instructions. Get out of the crowd and recognize who's giving the directive in your life. The prophet Zechariah 500 years earlier announces this fact. It's not in your notes. In Zechariah 9.9, 9, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph. O people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Get out of the crowd and recognize all that has been proven to you through the Word of God. You know, in the Old Testament, we're told what his name is going to be, where, how he was going to be born, by whom, where, the death, how, all that's going to transpire. It's all in the Word. So don't be surprised when things are going to start happening in your life. Things that are going to just, you're going you're to go through hardship. 
and troubles, you've got to recognize the authority of Jesus in your life. The other thing that came to me about recognizing the authority of Jesus in your life, that there might be some people in here that are they're sitting around and, and maybe a little hurt or maybe a little twisted, and you might have raised your hand a couple times and say, hey, look, I can sweep, I can cook, um, I could do this, I could take out trash, but you haven't been asked to be part of ministry or you're thinking that I need to be part of ministry and I need to serve in this way. Instead of getting angry and agitated and hurt and resentful and all those things that come into it, ask yourself, have I truly responded to the authority of Jesus? And maybe that's why we're not being used. Principle three, going back to principle three, consciously choose to commit all my life and will to Christ's care and control. Man, when he's the authority of my life, I don't have to do much. I just need to follow his will. So recognize his authority. Number two, number two, the fill-in is respond. Respond to Jesus with a true heart of worship. Verses 36, 38 through 38. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they have seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven. Glory in, glory in the highest heaven. We can demonstrate. We can act out acts of worship. We can shout from the rooftops. What separates you from the crowd is how you respond. Man, I see miracles on a weekly basis every Friday night. I see people getting their kids back. I see people that were told they were unemployable getting jobs. I see people forgiving their abusers, having been abused in horrible ways, responding with a true heart of worship by forgiving their abusers. People reconciling with family who had wrote them off. And I'm looking at people today who are hurting and part of a crowd. You know, sometimes we can, it's possible to recognize the authority of Jesus, but have you truly responded with an authentic heart of worship? When I say we could shout it from the rooftops, it's easy when we celebrate miracles and victories, it's really comfortable when we are rejoicing in the things that are happening and taking place. And it's one thing to, to, to be happy for someone else and then come back and sit back and wallow in our own misery. You know, you might not have to get, oh, how should I put it? We might not have the opportunity to lay down our favorite jacket for the king. But will you give it to one of his homeless children? When you respond to Jesus with a sin heart, sincere heart of worship, it's about his glory, and it's not about your feelings or opinions. Principle four and five. Openly examine and confess my faults to God, to myself, and to someone I trust. Principle five, voluntary submit to every change God wants to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove my character defects. Another blessing that I get to be part of the, the church board and the, for the last three or four years, I've been chairman of that board. And I have to confess to you today that some of my meetings uh, on the church board Let's say we don't always get along. Let's say we don't always handle it the best of ways. But when I started having a true heart of, uh, treating it as a true heart of worship, as not, but not as an obligation, then I can sit across the table from guys and I can say, man, if I give so-and-so a break on Friday for doing the best they know how to do, I need to give this person the same break that they are doing the best they know how to do. I transferred an obligation that I was viewing as an obligation. He doesn't want our obligation. He wants our love and our will, and our, he wants, our, he wants our, our trueness of it. 
from in here. And now it's an act of worship. What crowd are you with? Three. So you respond. You recognize, you respond. Three, resist the religious resistance. Resist the religious resistance. I feel like you should have the, the Stormtrooper soundtrack behind that. Resist. Da, 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 da. Luke 19, 39, 40. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If I kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into chairs. <clears throat> Circle teacher. <clears throat> And it says, notice how it says, some of the Pharisees? Because even within that crowd, there's a crowd saying, I don't know, he might be the guy. Where you have another group saying, this isn't the Messiah. There's no way it could be the Messiah. He was only supposed to be coming for us. And you have another crowd, part of that same crowd. So crowd interfighting, kind of like what determines your crowd. This is a small mission of truth by some of the Pharisees by acknowledging him as teacher. Teacher, rabbi. That's a form of respect. And they're, 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 uh, they're acknowledging some of the respect of his message, but they're not recognizing the authority. Are we splitting hairs in our life within our crowd? Parts of me feel like it's almost like, teacher, they're teasing us. Please make them stop. But what it turns out is, is you have one crowd showing way too much joy, and it slights the other crowd. So you have people that are getting caught up in the moment, hos moment Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And then you have this other crowd saying, man, that's really disrespectful to us. I can't believe they're doing that. Crowd problems. When it turns out that failing to realize, or even worse, choosing not to believe this was the Messiah that has been waiting for you. And this is who they have been waiting for, and they were missing it. You know, this, this request of trying to make them stop. It came from the same crowd that couldn't believe Jesus would be a guest of a sinner earlier in, the, in the, the first verse of this chapter. When Zacchaeus, the tax collector, he climbs a tree. Why? Because he recognized the authority. In verse 8, he responds with a true heart of worship. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give, my, give half my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I've cheated people on their taxes... I will give them back four times as much. Zacchaeus broke from the crowd. This is the day that many had been waiting for, but few understood. This is the king, the Messiah. Some of us are delighted with our salvation, but we want nothing to do with the obedience part. It's a package deal. It's Lord and Savior. I've mentioned this a couple times, but if your crowd has hang-ups, for example, I can't believe they let those people smoke over there. Don't get caught up in the preference or the personality of a crowd. Rather, look at the fruit that they produce. Does your crowd only talk and fellowship with, with believers? Don't get stuck in the crowd of the comfortable righteousness. Look, religion is for the guy that comes to church on Sunday and he thinks about fishing and football. He uses scripture to tear people down. Those who recognize the authority of Jesus Christ and respond with a true heart of worship. Well, I'm going to submit to you that those people have, have an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. 
and many have been through hell and don't want to go back. If I had to rely on any one crowd to remove my obsessions and cravings, I was a real live dope fiend. I was one of those guys that couldn't go to bed until he had this much waiting for him, but if he had that much waiting for him, couldn't go to bed without doing it. That's a real dilemma for a drug addict. Resist the religious resistance. Four, receive Jesus as the only way of redemption. Recognize, respond, resist, receive your four fillings. Luke 19, 41 through 42, but as he came closer to Jerusalem, he saw the city ahead and began to weep. How I wish today that you, that you of all people would understand the way to peace, but now it's too late. The peace is hidden from your eyes. One other, one other verse is given to us that actually show or, or say that, that, that Jesus wept because when he was told about uh, Lazarus, and so it's significant, I think, this, that you're pointing out this, this weeping part. You see, the waving of the branches, it, it was an act to demonstrate from the crowd. It was an action. It was something that they were showing that they didn't want Jesus to be the king and Lord and the savior of their life. They wanted him to be the mercenary, the king, the general to overthrow the Romans and separate them from Roman rule, not to come in and free them of, them, of their sins of their life. A lot of us want to pray that prayer, just fix this part of my life and get upset when nothing happens. This crowd, he wanted, they wanted someone to deliver them from the Romans. They blessings on that king. Hosanna, blessings on, blessings on that guy that's going to restore us and remove us from their rule. Not blessings on the lamb that's going to be the sacrifice. The other thing that action created with the palms was they were saying, we're willing to pick up our sword and our shield and follow you if he would lead them to war. They weren't saying, come into my life and lead it so I could just live clean. That I could just be a better daddy. He didn't come to overthrow the Romans. He came to love them. He is the Prince of Peace. His mission is not to free the Jews from the Romans, but to redeem the world of its sin. That was just a blip on his radar of his overall mission. The pain I inflicted on my parents, uh, their only son, the choices I made, the things I said, I, words that even with amends and forgiveness still leave a mark. The sleepless nights, to see them weep over the wreckage caused by my choices and actions. That Christmas in 98, on a visit, when I told my dad, that I'm sorry I didn't get a pass for Christmas. And he wept because he wanted it to be the first Christmas with his son sober. That's the kind of weeping that I picture Jesus doing as he's coming down because he's, he's weeping not because of the physical pain that's coming not because of the weak, what's going to transpire, the abuse that he will physically endure. He's weeping because of how ultimately all this is going to hurt his children. See, not, of us, not all of us get it. That little tug on our conscience, that little 
feeling in your gut. Some of us don't realize he's knocking on the, on the door of your heart. See, on Friday nights, people, when you're face down in the gutter, all you got is up. I think I'm ready to try God now. Some of my greatest joys have been having people knock on the door of my house. 6.30 on a Sunday morning, you have to take us to church today. Sit down. You're not going nowhere. He's knocking on your heart and you're waiting for someone to kick the door in. He's not doing that. He's saying, hey, don't do that to yourself no more. I love you. And so that the same crowd that is Hosanna and praising King save us and deliver us and all those things and then the next week these are the same people saying crucify him what crowd are you part of and so that this drove him to to weeping down this passage and we know what he endured on the cross you know, when I think of my salvation and how I always took it for granted, I always think about the physical part, but now that I know that he was hurt emotionally too, that's how I feel now about when I, how I treated my parents. When we receive Jesus and recognize his authority and we respond with a true heart of worship and we resist the religious resistance, man, receiving the blessing of his love, grace, and mercy, guess what, ha- what else happens? We get renewed. We get recycled. We get restored. Rec- relationships, they're reconciled. Man, I'm more than recovered. I'm more than a, an addict seeking recovery. I'm a sinner that's been redeemed. And I don't know where you're at in your life right now. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what crowd you're part of. I do know that if you have not been redeemed, that Easter is just a fairy tale to you. But you could change that today. The death, burial, and resurrection, that's a lot to get your mind around, but you know what? That's proof. There's proof. There's an empty tomb. There's, there's, there's the word of God, but more than that, every Friday night, there's a hundred lives that have been transported, that have been changed, that said they could not live life on their own without the power of Jesus Christ in their life, that proclaim Jesus Christ is their higher power. If that doesn't suit you, and that's not enough proof, man, I, just ride with Justin for a week. <laughs> if that's not proof, man, I got, I got six more guys that you could jump in with for a week. But let me tell you, I got, I got men that are in this room right now incapable of living in a, in, in a jail cell with somebody. They get out and get married and accept their, their new wife's kids as their own. Those kids call them dad. Having their own kids, having a blended family, being spiritual leaders of their household, seeking, man, so what's our excuse family we're all recovering from something but every time you see that word recovery I want you to see redemption something that I brought up the last time I spoke was the serenity prayer but we only say half of it and I wanted to present the whole thing to you. Say it along with me. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, 
taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you would make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Palm Sunday, the road to redemption. It's significant. It plays a big part. Are you reasonably happy? If you're not, I know somebody that if you just surrender and you recognize and you respond, that has a whole new world waiting for you. He is the God of changed lives. I get the band. Look, your story doesn't have to be like mine. And uh, when I told you that I was six or seven years old when I made a profession of faith back then, we used to bring people up and you would stand in front of here. And when I came back and I had got into discipleship with Pastor Ken at the time, and I said, hey, do you think I was really saved? He says, well, I'll tell you what, Al Coleman and Gary Morris wouldn't let anyone stand before the church unless they thought you were. So that I believe that I, at that early age, I made a profession of faith and I was saved by faith, but I got caught up in a crowd that changed my actions in a lot of ways. And I've got one of those compulsive and impulsive of whatever. They gave me all these big, long words that I'm diagnosed with, but, but I'll tell you what it is. I like drugs. I like the way that it changed how I felt, and I quickly become, went from a weekend, you know, recreational thing to a daily lifestyle. And I'm not saying, I'm not calling you all drug addicts. I'm not saying all that. I'm saying if a broken guy like that can be fixed enough to just kind of communicate, communicate that, and the only thing I've, I've graduated is high school and probation. You know what I mean? I'm not trained in anything other than reading the Bible and telling you how it affected me. If that's touched you in your life today, if, that, if anything that I said today, that's God. That's the Holy Spirit. And don't deny him today. Make this your first real Easter. What crowd are you going to be part of? You might be the one to change your crowd. Put him first. I'm going to pray. They're going to play. And there's going to be a prayer team to come up. You cannot be almost saved. Confirm that in your heart today. Father God, I thank you for a morning where we can come together. That you could take a drug addict like me, Lord, on Palm Sunday and just share a little bit about your triumphal entry. Lord, thank you for healing me from the inside out. Lord, I pray that these words have not hit an empty target. I pray that someone here today would change their life. Lord, that they would recognize your authority, that they would respond with a true heart of worship and invite you into it, Lord. Lord, I pray for the hurting. I pray for the lost. Thank you for everything that this week represents. And we give this to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and stand. So here I am.
to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me king of all days all so highly exalted glorious in heaven in Jesus Christ and I struggle with addiction. Man, you guys are awesome, man. I made my day. Another thing I would ask you to do is uh, there's a Celebrate Recovery uh, Calvary Belfair Facebook page. And the last time I checked, we were at 666 on the likes. And I want to blow that number out the water. <laughs> that, that, that's kind of a double connotation. But if you guys are ever like wondering what's going on, that's a good, good thing. If you, man, it's like, is the water cold? Is it cold? Is it cold? Do I want to go? Well, check us out on Facebook, and you might build up a little courage. All right? All right? Because we're not just posting pictures of tattoos and motorcycles and all that other stuff. 
There's people in there that are declaring victory over their hurts, over their habits, and over their hang-ups. Man, if, amen. We're praying for 500 bodies in here next week. Lord, uh, just, man, if each, each one of you could just bring somebody, all right? And it, as long as they're not a hostage, it's okay. <laughs> Have a great week. God bless you.